It was two years since the breaking of the arrow. A time of peace, and I was looking forward. And then a dark cloud settled over the stage from Lordsburg. There was a time when people could take good deep breaths of air coming off the desert in full bloom. But you can never tell what might turn up aboard a Jenks stagecoach. <laughs> Some trip. The road's rocky enough when everything's normal. Delay in the United States mail, huh? Oh, howdy, Judge. Daughter's gonna have to bring it and the passengers in on my back. Oh, uh, howdy, Captain Jeffords. Glad to see you made it, Sam. Judge, did you see that man? Yeah, but I, I must be wrong. It sure gives you a start, though. Yeah, it sure does. Say, ain't anybody gonna buy me that drink I've been dreaming of? Them, those people. What's their names? Oh, them? Uh, Pilgrim. Mr. and Mrs. Good looking, ain't she? Pilgrim. And yeah, the look of Eastern people. Oh, they're dudes, all right. Well, if you gents will excuse me, I've got to get that drink before I choke. Tom, it can't be. George Haskell was killed 10 years ago at Valverde. Even if he was alive, he'd only be 32 or 33 years old now. Man, Pilgrim's at least 45. The idea of Haskell coming back here is enough to keep you awake nights. Well, I hear you had a bad trip. I'll have some hot water for you right away, Mrs. Pilgrim. Thank you very much. Ever been west before, Mr. Pilgrim? Never. Hey, it's funny. Mm. For a minute, I thought I saw you somewhere before. Impossible. If he's alive, Mr. Jeffords, the Army will bring charges of desertion. It's a man that came in this morning on the stage from Lordsburg. I can't say for sure, Lieutenant, but if that man was Haskell, it's important the Chiricahuas don't find out. But why, Mr. Jeffers? Take my word for it, it's important. Cochise? Oh, this is Lieutenant Bledsoe. Lieutenant, this is the chief of the Chiricahuas. Jose, one of his sub-chiefs. My brother, I have heard strange news. What sort of news? We have word that Haskell is alive and in this country. Haskell was reported killed in action at Valverde. You were at Valverde. Did you see him die? No. Then it is possible he is alive. The army says he's dead. Right, Lieutenant? That's right. I've seen the records myself. You were not in this country when it happened? The affair at Apache Pass? No, sir, but I may have heard the story. From the white people you heard it. Exactly what did happen. I do not wish to speak of it. He was a new lieutenant fresh out of West Point, just about your age. And with a heart that fed on treachery. We will not speak of it. It is better forgotten. Or maybe, maybe he felt he was doing the right thing. If the young lieutenant thinks that, then the story will be told. It should be studied as a lesson by every army man who comes here until it is burned into the mind. Listen, listen well. You know that the Chiricahuas were the first to make peace. We kept our word. This was before the men in gray made war with the men in blue. We were called to meet with this Lieutenant Haskell, who was a stranger to our ways. He and a man named Ward, who hated all Indians, demanded from us a boy of seven years. I knew nothing of this. Face to face with this young officer, I saw in his eyes no wish to understand, no promise of fair dealing, but I felt we had nothing to fear. Our treaty had been fulfilled. We were under the white flag. We did not believe they would harm us, but they did. Captain, it was a bad thing and it became worse. Askel was wrong. What he did was unforgivable. I was the only one to escape still carry the mark of it here. My blood ran hot. 
We also took prisoners, white men. We offered to exchange them for our people. But Lieutenant Haskell and his madness refused. It's unbelievable. There were four who did not escape. Haskell put ropes around their necks. I saw this from the hills. And Haskell hanged my people. He did not even do them the honor of binding their feet. That is the story. Because of it, you went back to war. A thousand white people were killed. And many Apaches. But now that chapter is over. All the old hates are in the past. My father was Sansa, the first one to be hanged. There are brothers and nephews who still live among us. The peace has been good, my brother. I've made peace with a white man. I've kept it. But in my heart, I have never made peace with Haskell. He lies outside the peace. As far as we know, Haskell's dead. No one wishes this more than I. Jose. Haskell is alive. We do not know this. If he lives, the Apaches will fight him. Where are you going, George? Out. Please tell me, why are we here? I'm sorry. All right, George. I'd better arrange for a horse. I may be taking a trip. In a country you say you never saw before? Why did you lie about never having been west? I may be back tomorrow. Tomorrow? got something on his mind. Yeah, maybe it's that story you was telling us about them folks I brought in on the stage. You mean about Haskell coming back? Yeah, how'd you find out? Oh, there's big talk about it over at the general store. Yeah, same thing down to Scatfly. People arguing, was it Haskell or wasn't it? Yeah, and figuring how long it'd be before the Apaches find out about it. Well, if it is Haskell, I'm just praying they don't find out. I'm sorry, Mr. Jeffords. My husband isn't here. Do you have any idea where he went? Why don't you come in? Have a drink? No, thanks. George says something about a trip. On horseback. His name is George? Yes. George Pilgrim? What is it you're looking for, Mr. Jeffords? Are you a friend of his? No, he just reminds me of somebody. Somebody who is lost. First time I saw him in Philadelphia. That's what he reminded me of. Somebody who's lost. Wandering. Looking. Maybe not lost, Mrs. Pilgrim. Maybe he was running. Do you know anything about women? As much as the next man. They've got to feel needed. 
That's the most important thing. I had a good home. I was happy. Then he came along. Like a starved pup. The loneliest man in the world. I thought he needed me. He's built a wall between us. Brick by brick, he's put it there. Shutting me out. You see what I'm doing? It won't help much, Mrs. Pilgrim. You think I don't know that? I'm not cheap, Mr. Jeffords. I'm not! I'm sure of that. You live with a ghost. A man who, who isn't there. Time rolls up, you're alone. Always alone. Maybe he has something pretty bad on his mind. He could have told me. He could have told me anything in the beginning. He got that in the army. For bravery. Tell me, have you ever heard the name George Haskell? You think my husband's name may not be Pilgrim? I know he lied to the clerk downstairs about never having been west before. You're sure? He knows this town. But nice meeting you, Mrs. Pilgrim. Uh, tell me, who is George Haskell? Mr. Jeffords, I've got a decision to make. If you know anything to turn me loose, to help me get away, tell me. Who is George Haskell? He was an army lieutenant who made a serious mistake. He hanged four Apaches and a thousand innocent white people were killed. Electric! Say, this is Santa's favorite, the new GE Portable TV set. A General Electric Portable is the ideal Christmas present for the whole family. Three wonderful new models to choose from. Here's the GE Personal, the most exciting little TV set in the world. Weighs less than 13 pounds. This is the GE Companion. Goes anywhere in the house with you, and on trips, too. And here's the GE Big Screen Portable with a console size picture. Perfect as a handy second set. This Christmas, give the whole family a gift. A portable set from the world leader in portable TV, General Electric. Prices start as low as $99.95. For new ideas in TV, keep your eye on GE. You have the advantage of me, sir. Tom Jeffords. 
circle is becoming complete. Not if I can help it. Figured you'd come here. The murderer returns to the scene of his crime. You were reported killed in action. I changed papers with a corpse in Belverde. That's desertion in time of war. You think it mattered? There have been three years of killing by then, slaughter on both sides. It didn't matter. So you tried to run away from yourself. Apaches get you. Let's hope to Cochise. Don't you realize your being here could start another Indian war? I know I can't live any longer with a thousand dead in my dreams. With four hanged Apaches, bedmates. You hanged them. I was young, inexperienced. My orders weren't clear. My only advisor was filled with hate. my fault. I don't care whose fault it is. I'm keeping you away from the Apaches. Maybe, Mr. Jeffords. Maybe. Head out for Tucson before dawn. Maybe. Land. Cochise is land. You are Haskell. Take me to Cochise. Yes, you will go to Cochise. He was running this way. Alone? He ran from Jeffords. It was meant that I should come here. It is written in your eyes. You were driven to seek us. They say you are very wise. Maybe you'll know what to do. You hanged his father. His uncle. His brother. What can you expect from them? Some kind of answer. Many times I looked for you in the sight of my rifle. 
Why could you not have been there? He is here now. So what does it matter? Uh, no! They are remembering. The Apache has a long memory. No longer than mine. You have no fear? Part of me has it, Cochise. Another part drove me back here. Don't stop them. He invokes the old Apache law himself. And you, you yourself, Cochise, have said he lies outside the peace. I will take only those men who are relatives of the hanged men. This is not a good thing, Jose. It is a thing that must be done in a place which is fitting. Think only of the honor of the Apaches. I think of the price of honor. You know this place. I know it. Apache does not hang men. Only in a special case. You will learn many Apache ways before you die, Haskell. Your feet will not be tied. You will kick as my father kicked, dancing on air. Apache you hanged, you die a separate death. Get away from him, Jose. You cannot stop us, Jeffords. I can make a good try. He deserves to die. You know it. The law does not say so. White man's law. That's the law we're living under. The Apaches agreed to it. Cochise agreed. We have an older law of our own. Look, Jose, I don't care about Haskell. But if you don't turn him loose, the whole U.S. Army will be on you. I think you will stop now. Even you cannot go against our ancient law. If you want to shoot me, that's your business. Mine is to maintain peace. What good is peace while this man walks the earth? What is left of honor while this man breathes? There's also the matter of my honor. I'm turning him loose. think that Haskell should live, my brother. You know what I think, Cochise. Yes, I know. But is a man not allowed one hate? Only a weak man allows another to make him hate. And the Apache, this is not weakness. Look upon this Lieutenant Haskell. I'm not asking for my life, Cochise. He is a man who cannot sleep at night. He lives in the fire of torture. He is sick where there is no cure in the mind. He is sick of an old deed done in this place. Would you free him from the sickness? I have thought upon this. This man came here seeking death, desiring death. He wants it as a favor. He shall not have it. Let him go. that horse and don't stop until you're out of the territory. Where? Where can I go? Turn yourself into the army. You have regulations for punishing deserters. For a year, 
years he wanders the earth, the more honor to the Apache. I can feel sorry for him, almost.